Welcome to the Lake Research International E-Conference, a call for consensus on geoengineering in lakes. My name is Gang Tan, and I'm from Research Center for Eco-Environmental Sciences, Chinese Academy of Sciences at Beijing. I'm the chair for session two, Advances in Material Development and Application Procedures. The title of my introduction today is Lake Restoration and Eutrophication Control through manipulating algal blooms in situ. Eutrophication can cause harmful algal blooms and HAPs can cause sunlight and oxygen exchange blocked, dissolved oxygen depleted, toxin released, and massive fish and aquatic plants killing. It is well recognized that there are two alternative stable states in shallow lakes vegetation dominated stable states where nutrient levels are low and clarities are high and algae dominated stable states where nutrient levels are high and clarities are low. The shift between the two states is not reversible. Schaeffer and colleagues reported that the vegetation dominated states in Lake Velui collapsed as total phosphorus increased beyond 0.2 milligram per liter. To restore the vegetation dominated state, the total P must be reduced. However, the vegetation dominated state can only be restored at a much lower P level around 0.1 milligram per liter. This reduction of total P in natural waters can be very slow because of the memory effect of P in the sediment. By using geoengineering methods, the reduction of P level can be largely accelerated. So far, several methods have been studied for the purpose of internal phosphorus control, such as the applications of aluminum, phospholox, lanthanum modified clays, and silver bullet, etc., which will be discussed in details by our invited speakers in this session. Future studies in this area should consider the key issues of cost, efficiency, ecological safety, and sustainability of the methods. To solve these bottleneck problems, breakthrough in technical principles is often essential. For instance, we can ask whether algae themselves can be used for P control. Can the excess nutrients in water be used for biodiversity and ecological restoration. There are two major sources of nutrients for lakes, external loads such as runoff and atmospheric deposition and internal loads from sediment and suspended particulate phosphorus, including algae cells. Algae can absorb large amount of dissolved nutrients during the bloom, even at low nutrient levels. If we can remove algae cells from water and sink them down to the sediment and not to let them to be reused by the growth of algae anymore, then we may not only solve the problem of toxic algal bloom, but also make use of the valuable nutrients as a resource for the restoration of ecological system such as submerged vegetation. This idea has been studied in my group over the last 10 years, and a modified local soil technology has been developed. The multifunctional principle of MLS technology is that after the local soil materials are modified by various non-chemical natural safe products, the MLS materials can be used in an ecologically safe way to achieve multiple functions. The first function is HAP removal. By spraying the soil suspension onto the bloom, the soil particles can fluctuate and transfer the algae together with the nutrients from water to the sediment. Then by applying an MLS capping materials, the blocks can be buried into the sediment without getting back to the water. The capping layer also contains native macrophyte seeds, which can grow and utilize nutrients that come from the decomposition of the buried out blocks in the sediment 
the shallow water system. The restoration of submerged vegetation cannot happen in heavily eutrophic system, but it may be quickly restored after the water and sediment environment are improved. The submerged vegetation can further maintain the water and sediment quality in a sustainable way through the food web principle. Since we want to realize different functions using local soils as a carrier, we have to modify the soil particles using different principles. The goal is to switch the lake from algae dominated state to submerge the vegetation dominant state. The principles used including flocculation to remove toxic algal blooms, oxygen nanobubble that are loaded onto the surface of soils to degrade pollutants for the water quality improvement, the oxygen nanobubble modified capping materials to remediate the anoxic sediment for the internal load control purpose, a capsule seeding technology was used for the germination of submerged macrophyte seeds in stressed sediment environment. The general principle is to put algae and its nutrients into the food chain so that the nutrients may be reused for the biodiversity and the ecological restoration as a resource. Function one, algae removal. These are the photos cut from a video contest of a journal called ESMT. Small amount of chitosan modified soil suspension was added to this thick agar water. And the algae together with the nutrients can be separated from the water and sunk down to the bottom in a few couple of minutes. The water quality can thus be quickly improved, which can in turn provide light conditions for the growth of submerged vegetation. Details of how and why local soils can be used to flocculate algae cells can be found from previous publications. The environmentally, naturally, environmentally friendly natural materials are used in all the soil modification methods in order to avoid any adverse effect of using chemicals in natural water systems. This is a live demonstration under the witness of local government officials and expert panels in Lake Taihu in 2008 in an purposely constructed enclosure of 50,000 meters square. We finished the treatment of whole area in 30 minutes and this is the effect one day after. Six months later, submerged vegetations were partially restored in this area. Another engineering publication of MLS technology in Lake Taihu and its ecological effects on biodiversity was reported in this paper and in a video contest of ESMT, which can be found from this address. Function two is about term internal load control in the sediment. We developed modified local soil capping materials which can provide a physical block to reduce resuspension of algae flocks. By using one centimeter thick chitosan modified sand capping layer, even on the constant stirring of 200 RPM, the algal flocks can be physically capped without being mixed back to the water. The capping layer can also provide a chemical block to reduce phosphorus and nitrogen flux from the sediment. In the control and flocculation only systems, the sediment is a source of 2TOP. The source is reversed into a sink of 2TOP when MLS capping is used. As an overall effect, various nutrient fluxes, including nitrogen and phosphorus, can be reduced or reversed by using different capping methods. The reason for this effect is because the capping layer can provide a chemical barrier with much higher redox potential than the untreated sediment. We have studied the capping effect in open lake of Meiliang Bay at Lake Taihu, where only the sediment was treated, but not the surrounding water. 
For the untreated lake sediment, there is a high peak of phosphate in the summer and autumn. This phosphate peak was largely removed by the cutting treatment during the winter. The third function of MLS technology is integration. This slide shows the comparison results in a simulated system in the laboratory. Seeds planted in algal waters were dyed because of the bad water, light, and sediment condition. The bad condition can be lifted by the MLS treatment, which lead to the successful growth of the submerged vegetation. This function was further tested in a whole pond experiment in 2012. This is the result 70 days after the treatment. The water transparency of the treated pond was largely improved than the control one. Submerged vegetation were restored. These are the water quality parameters before and three months after the treatment. This is the result in another test field in Lake Taihu. This is the result before the treatment, two hours after the treatment, and one day after the treatment. This is the one year after the treatment for both the treated and non-treated ponds. In natural hub systems, an aerobic degradation of algae cells may result in greenhouse gas emission, such as methane. If the algae are used to feed the growth of submerged vegetation, MLS technology, the methane may be reduced. Preliminary measurements indicated that both CH4 and CO2 fluxes over the air-water interfaces can be reduced by different oxygen nanobubble modified local soil capping treatments. This may be related to the fact that redox potential in the sediment can be significantly manipulated due to the oxygen nanobubbles, which may greatly affect the microbial processes of the sediment. For general stories about nanobubbles, one can refer to this new scientist article where our nanobubble work is featured. Engineering facilities were developed for the application of MLS treatment at different scales. Our current studies include chemical and microbial conversion processes of capped algae flux in the sediment and its impact to nitrogen, phosphorus, carbon, and toxin fluxes over the sediment water interfaces and air water interfaces, mainly for nitrogen and carbon. Short-term and long-term responses of MLS flocculation plus capping treatment at replicated whole pond scales. For this purpose, we are building long-term study field containing laboratory, Mesocosm and pond experimental system in Cetian Reservoir, which is 250 kilometers west of Beijing. With this facility, we can study the effect of various geoengineering methods at laboratory, mesocosm, and pond scale in a replicated way, which can also be tested in open water. Here, I warmly welcome Lake Geoengineering colleagues to collaborate for various experiments using the facility. Here in session two, to introduce main advances in material development and application procedures in Lake Geoengineering, we have invited Professor David Hamilton from New Zealand, Dr. Brian Spears from UK, and Dr. Grant Douglas from Australia to give us plenary presentations on their pioneered areas. I believe their talk can stimulate active discussions and bring valuable insights into future studies. Please feel free to drop your comments in the discussion area 
so that we can consider your views or comments or to keep in touch. With this, I would like to thank you for your attention.